It was a beautiful morning on the island of Sodor. Gordon and James dozed peacefully as they had their boilers warmed. Their paintwork gleamed in the early summer sun. Gordon was feeling particularly proud. You know, little James, I don't know what the fat controller would do without me. I'm a necessity to this railway. <laughs> Probably give me the express title for one thing. <laughs> and that time, Dennis was away at the works being mended, so the fat controller had brought Percy to the yards to do the shunting. Today he had been working hard and was now covered in dust and grime. While he was at the water column, the big engines decided to tease him. But at least we don't look like that, muttered Gordon indignantly. It's a good thing he's stuck here. What would the passenger say if he was pulling coaches? How can the fat controller run an efficient railway with such a dirty engine? Go and have a bath, for goodness sake. Gordon rolled away laughing. <laughs> it's not my fault. Someone has to shunt those trucks, and it's certainly not going to be you, Lazy Wheels. Pa! retorted James. You're just jealous. And he puffed away to the container yards. Later, Percy was shunting some trucks for an afternoon goods train. Thomas arrived, hauling some milk tankers from the dairy. Percy was delighted to see his friend. Hello, Percy. Looks like you're working hard. How's everything going? Gordon and James are just being themselves as usual. All they do is boast about how important they are and how small I am. It gets pretty annoying after a while. Thomas headed back to the station on the top of his branch line. When he arrived at the big station, the signal was red, so he had to stop. The fat controller was standing on the platform. Hello, Thomas. Everything all right? I'm worried about Percy, sir. Those big engines still teasing. It's as if they can never think of anyone but themselves. Why, right, Thomas. I suppose it's just the way they are. But I suppose I'll have a word with Percy later. The signal showed clear, and Thomas puffed away. That afternoon, Percy was resting in the shed when the fat controller came to see him. Ah, Percy, there you are. I have a special task for you. I'll be waiting for you at Napford in a few hours. Make sure you're clean before you leave. Percy was pleased. Yes, sir. I wonder what it could be, he thought. Some workmen came to clean him. They scrubbed and polished everywhere they could. Before long, Percy's coat was spotless. He felt much more cheerful now. He whistled goodbye and went to the station. When he arrived, the fat controller was standing next to a line of gleaming coaches along the platform. Percy, as a reward for all your hard work, I'd like you to take the special trade to Wellsworth for the vicar is some of fear. Big or little, dirty or clean, hard-working engine is a splendid one. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, he said happily. He buffered up to the coaches, and when the guard blew his whistle and waved his green flag, he rolled proudly out of the station. Gordon and James were resting on the sidings nearby. They glared angrily at Percy as he went by. <laughs> What's he doing with those coaches? moaned Gordon. Quite right, agreed James. That should be a job for a splendid engine, said a voice. Gordon and James jumped. 
the fat controller had appeared in front of them while they weren't looking. They glanced nervously at each other, struggling for something to say. Eh, uh, um, well, sir. Well, uh, the thing is, enough you two. I've told you this too many times already. You're too stuck up. If you don't learn to behave and to appreciate the smaller engines, I shall have you two scheduled for good work. And good work only. I will not tell you again, understand? Yes, sir, they said quietly. And with that, the fat controller strode away, leaving the two pompous engines to consider their actions. <laughs>